Hello, this is Matt Moser, and today I want to cover our topic of showing how a net cobol for Windows underneath Fujitsu uh, cobol program can call out to a .NET program using COM component object model, uh, which is um, there's a few steps, but it's actually uh, not too bad. In this particular case, we're going to use uh, Visual Basic .NET as uh, the routine we're going to call from COBOL. So basically all that's going to wind up happening is this routine here is going to receive a message and or a string and display the message. Um, .NET up underneath Visual Basic .NET and I believe it's also true of uh, C, um, C Sharp which we did not put in that particular routine has the ability for what's called a public interface. If you remember, there's something called a TLB, a type live. And when we do TLB EXP against a DLL, it generates a type live that COM can see the routines. If you declare this public interface here, up inside your VB routine, you do not need to um, do the, uh, the TLB EXP. It will build a .TLB file for you. And this is per the documentation, um, as well as more testing I ran here. So continuing on a little bit, uh, the routine that we want to call is this one um, to review in order to expose this DLL to COM, to COM interop, what we need to do is to come into here, we'll look at properties, click on assembly information and we make sure that it's make assembly COM visible. Whoops, I want to say OK and then we can do a build because I really did not want to turn that off. So it goes ahead and does its build and then we're going to just kind of co cover a couple other areas and one of them again is this register for com interop. It too will build a TLB file but it's used for the developers. Um, if you're going to distribute you still need to uh, register the DLL so this will take care of it for you during your development phase as well as build the TLB type live information file that gets built from the command line typically. Signing. Um, in order to register the DLL, we come in here, we sign the assembly. I left this one off um, in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and just do a quick little um, show of how you can do this. I'm going to call this one vb.net DLL sign name key. And I'm going to turn off the password because I'm not too worried about that for this demo. I'm going to press OK. And then uh, basically we now have a DLL that is visible to COM or to our COBOL program that's running up under the Net COBOL for Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and press Save and do our build. And now we're going to go into the Visual Studio 2008 command prompt. Um, which I had up and running before and you'll notice right now it's over on vb.net dll2 because that was an area that I was working in earlier and I'm going to go back Debug. And basically we look in here, we see that we have a TLB file, but I'm going to build a new one just for the purposes of what we're doing here. So again, uh, we do TLB, EXP, space, and then the name of the DLL. Okay, so we have the export there, we do a directory lookup, we notice that the time changed, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do another one. The next thing is to register the DLL. I want to register it with the code base switch. And they're registered. Now keep in mind as before, if you wish to move these to the global assembly cache, you can use the GAC util. 
minus I install option, but if you're going to do that, do not use the uh, the code base option. And you can log up more on GACUTIL um, on the internet. And as always, you can always call and ask for questions or concerns. Let's move into the COBOL side. And here I have the COBOL program. And again, it becomes a COM program. Our repository has a class available to us called COM. Um, I'm going to create an ActiveX DLL reference, referencing COM here. And my COM class name is my vb.net dll.classvbfunks. And all this is right now is just a standard PICX40 with a value clause in it. And it's not until I run that I do the invoke with invoking COM with my create object, specifying that vb.net DLL with all its functions available in it and it will return back to me um, an ActiveX DLL instance that I can work with within this program. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to put a message up that says I am calling through COM to a .NET, VB.NET message box. It's going to call VB.NET. It's going to call ActiveX DLL. Actually it's an invoke. VB, WS ActiveX DLL. Call it using this function, passing this message. And when it gets done, we're going to simply close out the ActiveX DLL. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this and get some of our screens up and out of the way. And I'm going to do a build. Our build is successful. And now you won't be able to see the screen because of the way it's um, laid out, but I will bring things down as we can. And so I'm executing here. And as you can see, it called through COM to a VB.NET message box from a uh, COBOL project that was uh, VB. that was COBOL for Windows. So I'm going to press OK and everything ran successfully. So again, if you have questions, concerns, I can always be reached at Matt underscore Moser at Mosersoft.com. Source will be available up on the partner webpage for samples. And um, other than that, um, have a great day and we will talk to you in our next tutorial.